introduction to chemistry SS2 class aimed according to NEC curriculum benefit of studying chemistry chemistry help to produce fertilizers and insecticides which are helpful in increasing food production chemistry is helpful in making textile fibers which make clothing materials available by intensive chemical research. Chemistry contrib contributes greatly in making explosives used by the military. The knowledge of chemistry is needed in production of drugs for healthy life. Chemists produce suitable fuels for easy transportation. Courses of study. Courses one can study in higher institution of learning with some knowledge of chemistry are chemistry. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of life and the physical and chemical properties of matter. Pharmacy. This is where knowledge of chemistry is needed in the synthesis of drugs. Medicine. This is the study of chemistry in respect to human beings, the, both the physical and physiological aspects of living organisms. Chemical engineering. What is the application of chemi chemistry in chemical engineering? Chemistry makes use of chemicals to for automobiles, for automobiles such as engines, vehicles, air aeroplanes, and the likes. Then geology, geology study use the knowledge of chemistry to locate the position of some minerals and oil. Botany, this is the study of plants. Zoology. Zoology is the study of animals, etc. Topics to be treated Periodic table, chemical reactions, mass volume relationships, acid base reaction, water, air, hydrogen, oxygen, halogens, nitrogen, sulfur, oxidation and reduction, known as redox reaction. Ionic theory, electrolysis, hydrocarbons, and alkanols. Periodic table. Periodic table states the arrangement of elements in a fascinating manner. What is periodic law? Periodic law states that the properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic numbers. What that one simply means is that the, uh, the properties of elements is dependent on the atomic numbers because by virtue of the atomic numbers one will be able to classify elements into groups and period if you have an element such as calcium for example calcium it has atomic number of 20 and mass number of 40 so based on Bohr model it can be Bohr model talks about the arrangement of elements based on shells so if you want to arrange this atom it has two eight eight two <clears throat> so by virtue of this and you know that elements are classified into groups by virtue of the valence or outermost electron so for this particular element the this particular element will definitely belong to group two because the valence electron is two and what period will it be it will be period four because Elements are arranged in period based on the number of shells. And so how many shells do we have here? We have one, two, three, four. So this particular element will be in group two, period four. So that is simply the way by which element can be classified. So you can see that it is evident that elements being placed in groups and period depend on the atomic number. Then atomic structure. The structure of an atom has three components, namely protons, neutrons and electrons why protons and neutrons 
reside in the nucleus while electrons revolve around the nucleus. So what it means is that the electron which is negatively charged while the content of the nucleus is positively charged because the nucleus contains the protons and neutrons. And since neutrons has no charge, the uh, inside the nucleus assumes the charge of proton which is positively charged. The diagram of the periodic table is shown below. Now look at this the diagram of the periodic table. This one classifies various elements, even more than 30, because we know that between 21 and 30 we have a transition element, and they are characteristic <coughs> for the fact that they are d, d orbitals, partially filled d orbitals elements. The electrons in their d or on the d orbitals are partially filled, except in the case of zinc, which has 10 electrons in the d orbitals. Also, copper. Copper also has 10 electrons in the d orbitals. That is why they are not really classified as true transition elements. Just like your zinc. Zinc is white in color. Uh, is white in color because the number of electrons in the d orbitals is 10. But any, any, any other one will be colored because the electron in d orbitals will not be completely filled. Then electron configuration. This shows how electrons are distributed in the shell of the nucleus. The shells are named KMNOP, ETC. The maximum possible number of electrons in a shell is given by 2n squared, where n is the energy level of the characteristic atom. In an example, I can give you an example. When you have K, L, M, N, and we say that the maximum number of electrons is 2n squared. So for k shell, you have k. For k shell, you have your n to be equals to 1. So in that situation, if you go by this formula, we know that anywhere we see our n, we, we, we represent it with 1. So in this situation, this one will be 2 into 1 squared. So which is 2 times 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1. That's 2. So that means the maximum number of electrons you can have for k shell is 2. For l shell, for l shell, you have n to be 2. So in that situation, you have 2 into 2 squared. What is 2 squared? 4. 4 times 2, 8. So 2 times 4, make 8. So that means the maximum number of electrons you can have for L shell is 8. So, and so on and so forth. That is why you see a scenario for calcium where the, the first electron, which is your K, your, your first shell, which is your K shell, has 2 electrons. The next one has, which is your L, has 8 and so on and so forth. So you can use this formula to calculate the maximum number of electrons that you can have for respective shell. You see, talk about electron configuration. The first 20 elements are hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. Then from 21 to 30, they are transition elements, starting from scandium. Then electron configuration using Bohr model can be represented as shown below. Using Bohr model, we have two ways by which we can represent electron in an atom. You have the Bohr model and wave mechanics, wave mechanics model. What these two they are they are they are re, uh, related in the sense that this one has its own function and this one has its own function. When you are using Bohr model, it is it is shell way of arranging or shell way of arrangement. Why this one is orbital way of arrangement? Because in the shell we have K L M N O P E T C. Then in the orbital we have S P D F. So the, the importance or the significance of this Bohr model is that it enables a particular atom or element to be classified into groups and period. Just like for this case now, calcium. Calcium will be placed in group 2, period 4. So Bohr model takes care of that. But when we talk about wave, wave mechanism model, it is an orbital arrangement where you have SPDF, the maximum number of electrons you can have for S orbital will definitely be 2. 
The maximum number of electrons you can have for your p orbital will definitely be 6. While the maximum number of electrons you can have for your d orbital will definitely be 10. And the last, f, the maximum number of ele electrons you can have for that will definitely be 14. Wave mechanism model enables us to predict the block to which an element belongs. So in this situation, if we are to use this question as an example, by virtue of ABBA principle, where we have this scenario, where we have this scenario, so if you are going to arrange this question in this order, we notice that this is orbital arrangement, and in this situation, I'm going to have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. So in this situation now, since we have 20 electrons, the maximum number you can have for s is 2, s2, the maximum number of electrons you can have for uh, p is 6, s2, p6, 2. If we sum up all these electrons, we discover that it will be 20. That's to show that this is the wave mechanism model of arrangements.